Let the sand in the glass represent your life. Let the sand in the bottom of the glass represent the past. The sand in the top of the glass will represent the future. Now really think about this. The sand in the bottom of the glass represents the past. Everything that has happened right up to this moment in your life has been absolutely essential to make you the person you are to prepare you to do whatever it is you're going to do. I'm of the opinion that we never really know what we're preparing ourselves for. But if we're using the right ideas, we can be absolutely certain it's something great. Sand in the top of the glass represents the future. There's absolutely no way that any of us can tell how much sand there is in the top of our glass. You know, I remember my grandmother when I was just a little boy. She pretty well raised me, she and my mother. But my mother worked all day and Grandma was the one that was home when we were small. And Grandma came to live with us a year before I was born. My grandfather had passed away a year before I was born. So when I arrived on the scene, Grandma was already there. She would probably have been around 60 at that time. So in my mind, she was a very old lady. Now, I've since changed my attitude about that, but <laughs> at that time, Grandma was way up there. And you know, every day of my life that Grandma spent with us, I think I heard her say, I'll soon be gone, dear, I'll soon be gone. Well, you know, it got to a point we thought Grandma was never going to go. <laughs> now, we didn't want her to, of course, she was a dear soul. She really was. But Grandma kept saying, I'll soon be gone. She was 94 when she left. 94. And from the time she was 60 until she was 94, she was saying, I'll soon be gone. Now, around the same time, I had a young friend of mine, Bob Yates. Bob and I went everywhere. We did everything together. We were, as the saying goes, as thick as thieves. And Bob was two or three months older than I was, I guess. He got his driver's license two or three months ahead of me. And I remember Bob had this sort of a panel truck. It was like a sedan delivery. Today, I suppose we would call them vans. But it was on July the 9th, 1951, Bob was coming in the Kingston Road Highway, the highway you would travel on if you were coming from Montreal into Toronto, Canada. And there's one area that some of you would be familiar with where you can either go along onto Danforth or cut down onto Kingston Road. And Bob was cutting on down to Kingston Road and it was necessary to go under a concrete overpass. And as Bob came down there, wham, just like that, he hit that concrete overpass and like that, Bob ran out of sand, 16. Now that was a terrible impact in my life. I'll never forget it. But if you had asked Bob a half hour before that how much sand he had in the top of his glass, he probably would have said half a century for a low. He didn't have a half an hour. Now, I choose to believe that we all hope that we're going to go to bed tonight. And we're going to get up tomorrow morning, we're going to go to bed tomorrow night. But none of us know with absolute certainty whether that's going to happen or not. I remember the first speaker I ever heard was Charlie Cullen. And uh, Charlie's late for note doing what I'm doing right now. Right on stage. I suppose when Charlie went on to make the speech that he went on to make, he probably thought he had lots of sand left, but he didn't. And every one of us can tell a story like this. Probably tell a number of them. See, the point is, you don't know how much future you've got. What's gone is gone. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Some of you have had divorces. Some of you um, have probably had bankruptcies. 
Some of you have had terrible things happen in the past. But what's gone is gone. It's in the past. And to spend your time focusing on the past is to spend the only thing that you've got, and that's what's right here, right now, because the sand never stops running. This is all we've got. And to spend your time now thinking of what happened there is making absolute certain that the future is going to be the same as the past. Now, I don't suppose many of us spend a lot of time thinking about that, but a lot of us spend a lot of time making that error. That's an excellent symbol. All you got is now. We're saying here, don't think in reverse. There's a great poem here, Forgive. I remember years and years ago, I suffered with headaches, terrible headaches. I got to the point where I was taking buffering for the headaches. Then I got to the point where I was taking Sinutab with codeine for headaches. There was 16 in the bottle, and I got to the point where I was taking two bottles a day. As a matter of fact, most times I didn't even remember my head not aching. But I was sort of numb all the time. Of course, with that much junk in you, I guess you couldn't be any other way. And I remember talking to this chap. I was in the Hotel Vancouver, and I was picking up two heavy briefcases or suitcases, and I was in a real rush to get to the airport. He said, what's the matter with you? He said, you look like you're going to pass out. And I said, I feel like I am. Well, he said, what's the matter? And I said, my head is aching so bad, I feel sick to my stomach. Now, some of you suffer with this, and I felt like banging my head against the wall. It was so much pain. He said, go and sit down in that chair. And I said, I don't have time. I got to catch a plane. He said, listen, you can always get another plane. You only get one head. He said to me, do you know what forgive means? On the top of page 58, that's the title of the poem, Forgive. And by the way he asked the question, I just thought I probably don't. And I said, well, I don't know. He says, forgive means let go of completely, abandon, just let it go. Unequivocally, no strings attached. Now he said, if you want to rid yourself of headaches, just forgive all thoughts that are on your mind. And you just listen to me. And he put me in a totally relaxed state. I felt better than I had felt for years. If you're suffering from headaches, take the relaxation tape out of your program and commit yourself to listen to it every day for 30 days. And as you let yourself get involved in that relaxation tape, you're going to forgive any thought that comes to your mind. You're going to program your subconscious mind to put your body in a totally relaxed vibration because you're going to find that your head is aching because of the things that you're not letting go of. And it's causing tension and it's causing an abnormal state of vibration in the cells in the brain, which causes the blood to rush to the head.